welcome to the vlog. Hi, welcome to the vlog. Hi, welcome to the vlog. Hello, welcome to the vlog. So I'm about to dye my hair dark blue. I've been wanting to dye my hair dark blue for a couple months now. Actually, I did dye my hair dark blue like three months ago. And then I changed to green and I'm going back to dark blue. For now, I'm just taking some last minute green hair photos. I put on my snake earrings because further in. When I dyed my hair green, it was like dark green because I added black into it. But now it's fading into like greenish blue and it's like becoming really light, which I don't like. So I'm, that's why I'm going to be um, doing blue. Also, I started my reread of A Court of Mist and Fury a couple of days ago and it's so fun! There's so many scenes that happen that I'm like, wait, I don't remember this, even though this is my fourth reread. I'm just like, oh my god, this is so wholesome, why don't I remember this? And it's just so beautiful, I'm like, yes. I'm also reading a couple of their books, but we're not going to get into it because I'm just reading too many books at once and it would just be really difficult. This is me waiting for a new ring collection by Shop Dixie to drop and you'll actually get to see the rings I bought later in the video. This is so ex- oh my god, this is so exciting! Oh my god, I'm lit- oh my god, I'm fainting by- oh my god, I can't, I can't! Guys, I literally- I cannot function right now. This is insane. I have waited months for this collection and it looks- so beautiful so i was really stressed out for the next two weeks and completely forgot that i started a vlog but to recap i finished rereading acomath i finished rereading Akawar, and then i had a photography final project and i really wanted to shoot my best friend monique who lives in chiang mai another city i live in bangkok so the vlog continues when i have landed in chiang mai two weeks later also I'm from Chiang Mai. I lived there for over a decade, so I have a house there. My family's there. I know the place. Hello, so I'm in the balcony of my bedroom in Chiang Mai. This window leads outside to the balcony where I'm at. And then there is this ladder that goes up to the rooftop, which is my favorite thing about this room. So I'm just gonna go up, take a couple photos. I hope I don't fall and die. It's very beautiful. It reminds me a lot of Edward Cullen's room because his room opens up to the forest and so does mine. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. Ew. We are up here. This is my favorite thing about this house. So we have some trees, my grandma's clothing. I used to play on this when I was little. I used to live in Chiang Mai, but I moved to Bangkok five years ago. So I come back to Chiang Mai every December. I know it's November, but I came early this year because I had to do a photography project, which I'll put the photos of later for you guys to see. I'm so awkward, I'm so awkward, I'm so awkward, I'm so awkward. <laughs> Hello, so I never made a hair update. It's been about three weeks. When I first dyed it, it was a very dark blue, almost black. It honestly looked black at night. And I wash my hair around twice a week to save the color. A lot of green has started to show, especially up here, so I have to re-dye and add more blue. And then there's been like some purple somewhere. It's like a mess, but I honestly kind of like it. So in this vlog, I was supposed to be rereading Akamath and Akawar, but I forgot about the vlog and I already finished the two books, so that failed. But I feel like rereading A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin has given me so many new opinions that I just want to talk about. Firstly, I feel like I know that a lot of people hate Nesta and everyone knows that I love her. 
but at the back of my mind, I've always kind of known that she was a really bad person. And because everyone was always talking about the bad things that she did, I was like, yeah, Nessa's bad, but I like her. And when I reread A Court of Wings and Ruin, I'm like, Nessa's not bad at all. She's actually a really good person. And that's something I didn't notice the first time I read it. I thought she was bad, but I still liked her. But when I reread A Court of Wings and Ruin, I'm like, she's good. She literally tended to the wounded soldiers in the war with Feyre for a really long time. She just helped them while Elaine sat in a war tent and Elaine just stared at the wall of the tent. And Nessa was out there helping soldiers. Every time someone was injured, Nessa would help them. Nessa spoke up in the meeting with the mortal queens to get them the book. Nessa spoke up in the meeting with the high lords to get them to join the war. She is like there. She's always helping, she's always trying to make the world a better place and I didn't notice that the first two times I read it because I only noticed the bad things because that's all everyone would talk about. So yeah, that's one of the ways my opinion has changed. I remember I made a video called In Defense of Nessa Artron and I was talking about how she's a bad person but I still like her. But like after I reread Agawar, like she's a good person. I don't know how I didn't, I don't know. Also, I always felt like Elaine and Azriel were very platonic. The first two times I read it, their interactions seemed very platonic, like they would be great friends. And now that I reread it a third time, there is more romantic hints than I thought there was. So now I'm really conflicted with Lucian versus Azriel for Elaine. I don't know, I'm just really glad I reread the series. It's really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't notice. Hello. So I've also been reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue which everyone's been talking about on Twitter. Um, yeah. It's not that good because I forgot that I was reading it for like two weeks. And you know, a book's not good when you don't even know that you were reading it. Nothing's amazing me about it. I like the concept that everyone forgets her after they meet her so she doesn't know anyone, except for the dude that put the, who put the curse on her. Yeah, that's all I like about it so far. I'm also reading Feel the Fire by Krista and Becca Ritchie, which I've been reading for like almost two months now. But I'm hoping to finish Feel the Fire really soon because it's really good. So this is fun. Also, I just ripped my jeans. I know they look like they were intentionally ripped, but I actually ripped them. Yeah. So this is my Edward Cullen balcony, you know, when he hopped off with Bella and he said, hold on tight, spider monkey. Yes. Okay, bye. Do we go as honey <gasps> You're Hi. vlogging? No way. <laughs> Guess what, peoples? I'm driving. Yeah, she finally got her license. You're so pretty. I'm so embarrassed. And I'm absolutely. We were talking about how I was the night court today, and she's the day court. <laughs> Turn on the guitar. It'd be nice if it could be this fabric. What do you want to make? I want to make a skirt. Check like this for a little the rainbow style. Hi. <laughs> Look at what we're getting. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Come look at the Come look. It's amazing. Welcome to a series of very awkward flower videos. Wow. Got it. Amazing. Ew, this is so awkward. Okay, okay, okay something now. beautiful. Hi, we are at a flower farm.
So this is my hair. Um, it's a darker blue, whatever, that doesn't matter. So I'm really mad right now. If you've been keeping up with the Kardashians, A Court of Silver Flames, different editions, the tour edition went on sale today. It went on sale in the UK first. And I bought the tour edition. I checked out and it said special edition. And then I filled in my address and I bought it. And then when I got the order confirmation, it didn't say special edition. It, it just said book, meaning it's the normal edition. So I emailed them and I'm like, I didn't buy the normal edition. I checked out the special edition. This is your website's technical fault. And they didn't reply my email. And I sent another email and they didn't reply me. So I called them. I called all the way to the UK from Thailand. Do you know how hard that is? I talked to them on the phone and they basically said that there's nothing they can do because their system said I ordered the normal copy even though I didn't. And they said, we'll get back to you. And I'm like, no, like you have to tell me now because the US store is about to go on sale. And if I don't get it from the UK store, then I have to buy from the US store. And they're like, just go ahead and buy from the US store. And then I have to try to get it again on the US store, which goes on sale in two hours. And I'm really sad because firstly, the US one is gonna be more expensive. Also, the US event is at 8 a.m. in Thailand time. Like, I'm not gonna wake up for that. And it's like, like it's not even my fault. So you're telling me I bought the normal edition. No, I didn't. Like, I didn't. Like, I did. Like, I, and I, I, I said that on the phone. I'm like, I didn't. Like, it said special edition at the top. Like, I'm 100% sure. And they're like, we have to treat all customers the same. Like, if I let you, then I have to let other people. Like, what? Like, this is your fault. And I'm really mad and I'm really sad. I just bought the tour edition from the US store, which was a lot more expensive than the UK store. And now I have no money, but, but it's okay. We do it for Nation, okay? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We grab it. Hi, I just wanna start off by saying that I couldn't find my blush, so if I look like I belong in the Cohen family, which I do belong there, that is why. Also, Taylor Swift dropped um, an album today and I'm going to react to it. I am a big Taylor Swift fan. As, as you can see, I have my signed CD right here. We love it. Signed Lord CD over here. We love that as well. My phone case, which you can't see because I'm using my phone to film, but it's a Taylor Swift case. And then I also have my folklore hoodie. We love to see it. So yeah, I'm gonna listen to it and I'm really excited because my best friend just listened to it and she said it's a lot better than folklore, but she didn't like folklore that much, but I loved folklore. So I don't know if I'm gonna like this one better, but I'm so excited. I might not actually play the song because I don't wanna get copyrighted, but I'll tell you my thoughts on each song. So let's start with Willow. Let's watch the music video. Oh my God, wait, the video starts at the ending of Cardigan? Oh my god, no way. Oh my god, that's so cool. It's giving me such cardigan vibes, but like different. Okay, the colors and everything is so pretty. She went from Disney princess to the evil witch real quick. This is literally a Disney movie. Okay, so my thoughts on the song. I really love it, but the music video was so magical. It was so beautiful. I love the goat, the sparkles. Okay, now I'm playing Champagne Problems. Okay, this is like a slow song, I guess. Champagne problem thoughts. I really love it, but what really stands out to me is the bridge. You know, I went into the album knowing that we're gonna have so many good Taylor Swift bridges. And I really love this one. I don't know, for some reason it reminds me of the cardigan bridge. Like the rhythm. Oh, I love it. I feel like champagne problems is a bridge that I would replay. Just to elaborate on replay the bridge, sometimes I'll open a Taylor Swift song just to listen to the bridge and keep replaying the bridge, like All Too Well, Dear John, Last Kiss. I love those songs, but I often will open it just to replay the bridge. And I love that I predicted myself because this is two days later and I have been replaying the bridge of Champagne Problems nonstop. Also, it's my number one favorite song in this album. Next up is Gold Rush. It's so Christmassy. Okay, thoughts on Gold Rush? I don't think it would be my favorite in the album. Not because I don't like it, because I really like it and I love the bridge. Um, I just feel like the type of Taylor Swift songs I like are more like 
like heartbreak emotional like all too well haunted dear john west because you know the thing is like i don't like songs on the first listen and then as i listen to it more and more i start to fall in love with it so this could really change next is tis the damn season i feel like this will be really christmasy just because you know it's the season if i wanted to know who you've been hanging with while i was gone i'm getting like cardigan betty vibes you know that love story if betty and the betty guy what's his name does he have a name james how could i forget i feel like if betty and james got together at the end of betty and then they were in a relationship and then they broke up i feel like this would be their song for like like way out like a couple years after like it's betty and james song you know wonder about the only soul who can tell which smiles i'm faking that's a lyric he can't see the smile i'm faking that's the way i loved you oh my god it's literally a reference to the way i love you the way i love you is one of my favorite taylor swift songs so okay um tis the damn season thoughts this is definitely gonna be one of my favorite songs in the album i mean it already is i love it and i know that it's probably not intentionally the teenage love triangle betty august cardigan but i feel like it is it's like betty and james a couple years later after they broke up <laughs> okay now i'm listening to tolerate it nice piano i feel like this song really reminds me of folklore like it could be in folklore took this dagger in me and removed it wow she's a poet that was kind of a sad song this really reminds me of a folklore song but i don't know which one especially when she says always taking too much space or time and like that melody is in a folklore song i don't know which one next up is no body no crime featuring Haim or H-E-I-M, I don't know how you say it. I only know one of their songs. Ooh, Siren. Interesting. Firstly, it's giving me like better than revenge vibes. Whoa. Oh my God, that sounds like you should have said no. Like the beginning. Da -na 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 -na. Okay, I'm a third into the song, and this is really good. This is genuinely... This is really good. The song makes me want to be evil. Um, I really love this song. This is one of my favorites. This one in Tissa Dam season so far. I feel like this song really demonstrates her storytelling ability, and folklore also really proved that. For some reason, it reminds me of The Last Great American Dynasty, like the story of like a wife and a husband. But this one is like evil. I couldn't pay attention that much to the lyrics because I was trying to listen to the melody. I love that at the end, like it changes from, I think he did it, but I just can't prove it to, she thinks I did it, but she just can't prove it. I feel like this could be a movie, like a really good movie. I wasn't letting up until the day he died. See, I love that change. She always does that thing where like she changes at the end, like something and then it's just like, wow. No, like, I'm so excited to go back and listen to this on repeat. And that is exactly what I did all day today. Wow, that was a really good song. Okay, next up is Happiness. But for some reason, I feel like it's not going to be a happy song. Was that a great Gatsby reference? That was a great Gatsby reference. I hope she'll be a beautiful fool. That's what, what's her name, Daisy said? I hope she'll be a fool. That's the best thing a girl can be in this world. A beautiful little fool. That was a Gatsby reference. So Taylor Swift just referenced Lord through the group. <gasps> wait, wait, I just connected it all together. So, so like I was joking how she was referencing Lord because of the green light, because of her song Green Light. The green light is such a symbolic symbol in the great Gatsby because Gatsby is always trying to reach out towards the green light and then she also referenced Daisy through the beautiful fool this is a great Gatsby song I love that I caught that the last sentence leave it all behind and there is happiness that's such a Gatsby reference this song kind of reminds me of hoax but it's worse 
I'm sorry, it's not worse at all. I just only listened to it once, so I didn't, like, feel the song. I mean, I still think it's worse than Hoax, but that's because I still have only listened to it, like, twice, so I don't know. Next up is Dorothea. Just finished Dorothea. Um, the song doesn't really stand out to me right now. I don't think it would be, like, in my top five. But I do want to say that the first time I listened to Betty, I didn't like it. And Betty is now one of my favorite songs on Folklore. So, you know, this could really change. Okay, so I'm 1 minute and 20 seconds into Long Story Short and it's really giving me speak now energy. From 1 minute to 1 minute and 20 seconds, I just really feel like the speak now melody. Not the song, the album. Okay, you know how like if you smell a perfume, like it smells good, but if you start smelling lots of perfumes, all the smells start to give you a headache? Not saying this album is giving me a headache, but because I'm getting so many melodies and so many lyrics thrown at me for like the past hour, it's like they're all starting to blend in together. So like I don't have an opinion on long story short. Because, like, all the songs are just blending into my head. Like, if you smell 10 perfumes, you're not going to have an opinion on the 10th one. Does that make sense? I feel like it makes sense. I like it, but again, like, I don't even remember it at this point. Now I'm listening to Marjorie. I know it's the name of her grandmother. And I know that Epiphany was about her grandfather. Also, her grandmother looks just like her, but with dark hair. Like, this is Taylor Swift. This photo especially, wow. Um, that was really sad and I just cried. <laughs> okay, so I have an essay due in 12 hours. I'm gonna write that essay while listening to the album so that I can really digest all the songs and really know what I feel about each one. Because just from listening to it once, like, I really don't know. And to give a little update on my reading, I read Vicious, I read Ruckus, and I'm almost done with Scandalous. Those are the three books in the Sinners of Saint series that I really love. These are all rereads, I've read these books before. I have started How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories, but I only read one chapter. And I'm really, I'm so excited to read Fire Night, which is a novella in the Devil's Night series. If you haven't watched my videos, Devil's Night is my favorite series in the whole wide world. So I'm just really, really excited for that. Thank you for watching the vlog and I'll see you guys in my next video, which is coming really soon and I'm really excited for it.